we first see Artipithecus, it's striking to us because here's an animal that truly is primitive, and yet it's embarked upon a career of walking bipedally. Bipedality is so common to us, it is so second nature, that we tend to think it's a very natural form of locomotion. It is in fact a very strange and odd form of locomotion. Roughly seven billion of us live on the planet today, with over half that number settled in towns and huge cities. It seems like humans are everywhere, so we seldom stop to reflect on what truly odd mammals we are, or question the truly weird way that we walk. If you go to New York and walk the streets of New York, you look around and you don't think anything about the fact that these are all erect walking bipeds. And yet, this form of locomotion is absolutely unique in the animal kingdom. As we track humans back through time into the fossil record, and all of our individual special characters began to drop out. When you get to the very bottom, it is simply bipedality that becomes the defining character of being human. Bipedality is traditionally the hallmark of being human. So the very definition of humanity, or the family name hominidae, was defined by the fact that our earliest ancestors were able to walk on two legs. For scientists, bipedality has always seemed the most puzzling part of human biology. It's a terrible form of locomotion. So you're forced into the question, why did this animal ever adopt this peculiar form of getting around? No other mammal has ever become a bipedal walker, and for a very good reason. A four-legged animal has far more speed and agility, while slower bipeds would have been easy meals for hungry carnivores. There's no shortage of ideas about why bipedality evolved in hominids. For decades, bipedality was thought to have evolved as our ancestors moved into the grassland savannas of Africa. But the evidence now shows that Artipithecus was a biped who lived and died in a woodland, not a savanna. Most theories about walking on two legs have focused on a single, isolated advantage, like the ability to reach up and pick fruit, look over tall grass, or to stand up and adopt a threatening pose. Bipedality in and of itself could not solve any particular simple issue. It must have been part of a larger and more important adaptation. And that's the mystery of human evolution, is figuring out what that adaptation was. It's now clear that millions of years ago, bipedality did evolve in our African ancestors. So, walking upright must have provided some huge biological advantage for the earliest hominids. Bipedality was a positive that outweighed all the negatives. What advantage did it bring to our early ancestors? In the evolutionary sweepstakes, Darwin knew the winning ticket was leaving the most successful offspring as humans have. Our closest relatives, the great apes, have not kept up and today, they're on the brink of extinction. Gorillas and chimps occupy little pockets of Miocene forest, but they're not successful. They're on the decline. While hominids are all over the world, hominids became enormously reproductively successful. And what that signifies is they must have undergone a major shift in reproductive strategy. An intriguing clue to that shift in reproductive strategy would come from the many fossil teeth found at Aramis. Just the evidence investigators needed. 
Males of all living and fossil apes share one very distinctive trait. In order to compete with one another, they have very large projecting, what are called honing or sharpening canines. The upper and lower canines, when they occlude against each other, actually sharpen to keep them uh, in excellent shape as aggressive tools. Canine teeth from many Artipithecus individuals were found at Aramis, and all of them were small and blunt. Because all living and fossil male apes have large, sharp, projecting canine teeth, it's likely that our distant ancestors also had them. But Artie did not. Even the largest male canines in the Artie species were very small compared to any fossil or modern ape. Ardipithecus had seen canine reduction. At 4.4 million years ago, Ardipithecus had evolved two big changes, bipedality and smaller male canines. Taken by themselves, either change would seem to be a huge disadvantage. So we're faced with putting those two critical uh, clues together and explaining it somehow. What could walking on two legs have to do with small canine teeth in these earliest hominids? One possible explanation comes from studies of primate behavior and anatomy. In Artipithecus, the canines have dramatically reduced, and this tells you that somehow there's been a major change in social behavior. In all other primates, Males use their canine teeth as weapons to threaten and fight with each other. They fight over females, who show visible signs that they're ovulating. Male Artipithecus canines are greatly reduced, like ours. If male canines are reducing, it means that females are choosing males with smaller canines. What could a male be doing that would make a female want that to have the offspring of that male rather than those of a more competitive, more aggressive male? One possible answer is that by pairing with males who were dependable sources of food, females had more time and energy to devote to their youngsters and to have more of those offspring during their lifetimes. This is what winning the evolutionary sweepstakes is all about. Reproduction and survival. The formation of what scientists call a pair bond between males and females would have been based on the exchange of food and sex. With this kind of system, males could have foraged separately from females and their infants the all-important reproductive advantage would have gone to those males who collected and carried high-value foods to their mates and their dependent young, whom they likely fathered. Natural selection would have favored those who could walk farther on two legs, carrying food more effectively. Males with smaller canines, pair bonds reinforced by regular sex, carrying and sharing of food, could these be the keys to the evolution of bipedality? To the evolution of us? Better bipeds would have been better able to carry food. And carrying food would have given the earliest bipeds a big reproductive advantage. If this model is correct, then bipedality was the breakthrough at the base of our family tree and the foundation of our mating practices in sexual biology. So it turns out that the long-sought keys to our species' success and the basis of our unique sexual biology are all tied up with the strange way that we walk. We humans are not just the most unusual primate. We are arguably the most unusual mammal on planet Earth.